Today, I'm gonna to show you a cheap and easy way how to monitor your temperature and humidity inside your greenhouse and get that information onto the web. What I'm gonna be using from a hardware point of view is the Wemos D1 Mini, the AM2302 humidity and temperature sensor, as well as a 10K resistor. And then of course, a few pieces of wire to connect it all together. Here's the pin layout for the AM2302. Pin one is for voltage in, pin two is for data, pin three isn't used, and pin four is for ground. You wanna take the 10K resistor and put it across pins one and two. You want to use some heat shrink tubing or some electrical tape to make sure that these pins don't touch each other or that the wires don't touch each other because this will not work if that is the case. It's now time to connect the sensor to the D1 Mini and this is pretty straightforward. Pin 1 from the sensor goes to the hole labeled 3V3 on the D1. Pin 2 goes to the hole labeled D1, and pin 4 goes to the hole labeled G. We are going to be using the Arduino IDE to do the coding for this project, and you can get that for free from the Arduino website, so just download that. But if this is your first time using it, there's something you're going to need to do to get the setup so that it works with the Wemos D1 or the ESP8266 boards. And if we look in the tools and boards area, you'll see that I can't see the ESP8266 in here. So I can't actually choose that. It's just the Arduinos in there. What you can do though, is you can add it from the boards manager. But before we go into the boards manager, what you need to do is file preferences and then additional boards managers URL. We've added that in there already. I've got a link to that in the code itself as well, which I will leave in the description down below. So you can very easily do this yourself. So we've added that, let's go to the boards manager and let's look for the ESP8266 and install that. So there we go, let's install it. It's gonna take a little while, so I'll just skip ahead a little bit, but this will take a minute or two to just download and install itself and we'll then move on to the next step. Once the boards have installed, then you'll have this available to you now in the boards area. Down the bottom, you'll see there's a few more devices that you can select from. The one we're using is the Wemos D1 Mini, so we're just gonna select that, and that means we can now work with this board without a problem. One other thing you need to do before we can actually compile this and run it is you need to install the DHT library. You can get this from the GitHub link over here and you'll be able to see that down in the description below as well and it gives you instructions on how to install it too. Once you've installed the DHT sensor library then we can move on to the actual code itself. I'm not going to go through every single line in this code today but I will point out a couple things as we go along. The first thing I want to point out here is this line. So we can see that we're assigning pin 5 to DHT pin and Pin five actually corresponds to pin D1 on the Wemos, so just bear that in mind. And the second thing here is this DHT type. Depending on the sensor you use, you're gonna change what that value is. The sensor we're using is the AM2302, which is the equivalent of the DHT22. There are others you can use, just make sure you're using the right one over here. The rest of the code is pretty self-explanatory. We're just collecting the information from the sensor. So over here, we're collecting the humidity and assigning it to the variable H. And over here, we're collecting the temperature and assigning it to the variable T. We're checking that the returned results are legitimate. And if not, it's gonna to return to the top of the loop and try again. If it is legitimate, it's gonna move on and actually print these out into the serial monitor. It's time to compile this and upload it to the device and see whether we actually have this working or not. And there we go. We have compiled it and uploaded it and it's time to see whether it's actually returning results as expected. So what we need to do is go into the serial monitor, which is right there, and we can see it's returning the humidity and the temperature accurately. And one thing to point out here, if you're not used to the Arduino IDE, make sure that this number over here is exactly the same as the number you have over here. 
or else it's going to show some weird results and you're going to be very confused as to what you're looking at. So for example, if I change this down to, let's say 9600, which I think is the default, you can see here it's not synchronizing properly and it's showing random characters rather than the actual information we want. So if we just change that back to the correct board rate, you can see it's going to start showing that information correctly again. Now that we can successfully gather the sensor information, let's do something interesting with it. First things first, we need to be able to get onto the Wi-Fi so we can get out to the web. And secondly, we need to be able to interface with a platform or something where we can upload that information. In our case, we're going to be using the UbiDot service. So the code we're looking at here is just an extension of what we were using previously. And we're just adding on the ability to connect to the Wi-Fi and also the ability to connect via the MQTT protocol to UbiDots and upload our information. I will leave this in the description below. So you'll be able to have all the code and you'll be able to just modify the token to your own personal token, as well as your Wi-Fi information. Make sure that that is relevant to your own setup. Let's upload the code to the Wemos D1 and see what we get. So there we go. We can see that it's connected to the Wi-Fi and it is publishing via the MQTT protocol directly to UbiDots. Here we are on the UbiDots website. I'm logged in and we can see that there's no devices created. The code that I've put together actually will create that device as well. So I don't have to manually go and do that. If I refresh this page, hopefully it's created the device and it should have some data in there. So there we go. We've got the temp and humidity for the small greenhouse. And we can see that a few seconds ago, there was some activity. So if we go into it, we can have a look at some of the raw information. We can see these are the last figures that have been uploaded. And if we go into it, we can see the raw data itself. So that just shows you how easy this is to actually create these devices and start uploading information so you can actually visualize it and see what's going on. And it's pretty straightforward. You can do some other cool things as well. So this is just looking at the raw information. But what if we want to create a dashboard? Then we're able to create some nice little widgets. So what can we do here? Let's just create a line chart for now. We'll fiddle with a few others in a second. And let's add temperature. There we go. And I know we need to change this. So we select the device we want to monitor. And there you go. So there, it's going to be live update. Let, let's change the delay on the code itself so that this updates a bit quicker and we can see this moving across. Make it a bit more interesting visually. So if we go down here and let's just make that one second, a thousand milliseconds and upload that. There you go. You can see it's updating a bit quicker. I'm going to grab hold of the temperature sensor so we can increase the temperature of it. You can see that reflected pretty quickly on the graph itself. And we can see how easy this is to create some very useful graphs. You can pretty much monitor it from wherever you are. And you can do some other things as well. So let's just I'm gonna let go of the temperature sensor now. So it should start leveling out and then dropping again. But if I go in here, I, I can see there's a, quite a few other widgets. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about some of this. Uh, but for example, there are things like sliders and switches. So if you do want to control your devices, you can do that by using a relay and you can communicate back and forth. It's a little bit more code than what I've shown you today, but again, it is pretty simple. Let's create a widget to show the humidity. So let's have a look here. Uh, I think tank would be a good one. We'll show the humidity based on that, but you can imagine using the tank for something like monitoring the level of your water inside your flower pots, I guess. Or if you're monitoring your hydroponics, you can monitor your water levels in that as well. But let's just use this for the humidity. Add a variable, which will be... And let's see what that gives us. So there we go. So the humidity at the moment is 33.9% or 34 
I'm gonna go put this sensor now inside my small greenhouse where I'm overwintering my plants and we can keep an eye on the temperature there. I'm not too worried about the humidity at this point. Uh, it's more about the temperature itself. First thing I wanna do though, before I take it outside is change this delay again. I don't need it to be updating every second. So I think I'm gonna change it to once every minute. I think that might be useful. So 60,000 milliseconds and let me upload that and I will take this outside. So we have the temperature and humidity sensor inside the small greenhouse now, and we can see that that temperature has vastly dropped down to 13.5 Celsius. And now we can keep an eye on what's going on inside the little greenhouse, make sure that the temperatures aren't getting below freezing, and that the small bar heater that I have inside there is actually doing the job that it's meant to be doing. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I created my own platform to upload all my data from my greenhouse as well as control my greenhouse. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's functional. It does what I need it to do, and it's been working pretty great for the last year and a half, two years. When UbiDots approached me to try out their service, I was keen to give it a go, see what was out there. I've kind of avoided those other platforms that are available on the web, mainly because it would make me feel uh, very inadequate in terms of what I've built and seeing what actually is out there. But I'm glad I did, I tried their service out and as you can see from this video, hopefully it is so easy to use. If I had used it before I created my own platform, I probably still would be using it today. But I enjoy the tinkering and I'll probably keep building my own platform. Um, it does what I need to do and I find it nice and easily customizable. But the UbiDot service, definitely is a powerful platform um, give them a try go check out what they have to offer it really is the easiest way to get up and running with a platform like that you just upload your data and they start doing cool stuff with it i hope you enjoyed this video i know it's not for everyone the whole automation coding and that sort of thing but for those that are interested in this sort of stuff i will be releasing a couple more videos like this in the future talking about what i'm doing in the greenhouse back there also the poly tunnel i will be putting some automated irrigation in there as well so i'll be modifying my system to incorporate all that and talking through that process thank you so much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video bye bye for now